Good morning. How great it is to be with you today for Kneading Bread for the Master. I'm Karen Clymer, greeting you from my kitchen pulpit, and we're going to be talking about this, this subject today. Be tougher than the trip. Be tougher than the trip. That's the title of our devotion today, and we're going to be reading from Hebrews chapter 6, verses 11 through 12. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. That's Hebrews chapter 11, verses, uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. Oh, what a privilege it is to minister the word of the Lord today. We look forward to discussing. Oh, let me get this started right here. All right, 10 minutes. We're going to be kneading this bread and this dough, and we want it to be, make sure it's alive. First thing, I've been failing to mention that. If this dough, it does not move, I'm going to know that it's not alive, and I need not proceed any further. But I can already tell you, it's alive. I know right now it is alive. It is it's moving, it comes right back, and you push it down. So it's alive and well, and we're gonna keep right on kneading this bread for 10 minutes, the Lord willing. All right, so we are, it is kneading bread for the master, is the title of our program here on Silver Citizen Believers Brigade. And you know, we as silver citizens, we want to be giving our very best to the Lord every day. And those that are not silver citizens, it's the same way. Titus chapter two tells us that we are examples and, uh, you know, believers, we are examples to others. Some accept and some reject, but we still are going to be living for the Lord. And we are the examples that others can see. Not that we are totally perfect. We never make a single mistake ever. I think I see Dana is listening. That's a long ways away, but that's what I'm seeing, I believe. So, welcome. Glad to have you. All right. So, I was thinking how important it is, you know, the kneading of the bread I talk about about how that it binds all the ingredients together and so the Lord then can use us but when we have to punch this bread down it's going to rise up and you have to punch it down and that may sound like well, why would you do a thing like that but it actually is beneficial and then it will rise again it will make uh, rolls out of it and then uh, you know they have to rise and then, then you put it into an oven and nobody likes that but we think these experiences that we have sometimes we feel like we're being punched around. Well, the Lord's got a plan. He knows what's happening, and He's watching over us. He's watching over His Word to perform it. Never forget that. And for our introduction today, now that we've had kind of a pre-introduction, we're going to talk about a time when there was a, a prophet, a great prophet, Elijah. The Lord had marvelously used him, and He had strategically placed him and timed him. And everything wasn't always good. You know, people say, well, if you're in the will of God, everything will be going great. Well, that's not really true. Sometimes, well, actually, it's just a variety. The Lord doesn't put more on us than we can bear as far as, you know, uh, temptations will come. That's what that scripture is actually talking about. Uh, that if you have temptation, there's no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. But what you will be able to bear it, the Lord will make a way. Well, we have situations here such as this prophet Elijah he was in a situation now that the people couldn't make up their mind if they were going to serve God or serve Baal. And he was so tired of them waffling, you know, just changing their minds. And finally, he said, we're going to settle this once and for all. So if he said, how long are you going to halt between two opinions? So we're going to, you're going to make up your mind. He said, so if Baal be God, serve him. If God be God, follow, follow him. Well, he knew it was the one true God was the only one. Well, they had a contest, and we won't go into all the details of that. But who's ever God answered by fire, that was the one, was the one true God. Well, you know, it was, uh, who's God answered, it was the one true God. And as Elijah had prayed that prayer, this 57-word prayer, and God marvelously, just miraculously answered, here come fire down from heaven, consumed the sacrifice, and how then that the prophets of Baal, 400, and maybe even 400 plus, were killed. And but you know, so, I mean, you think Elijah, she, he's at the height of success. I mean, look at it. I mean, this is the height of success. Well, when Queen Jezebel found out about it, she put out an APB, you know, all points bulletin. And this man, he was the same as dead. Well, you know, here was Elijah who just fit, had a great victory. 
My, he was just sky high, we thought, spiritually. He's just sky high. His faith has got to be just over the top. But he was terrified. You stop and think about this. Elijah had been preaching and teaching. He had been ministering, prophesying. And those people would rebel. Then they would, they'd want to serve God. Then they'd look to Baal. And then over and again. So he was weary. He was so tired of it. He said, how long halt you between two opinions? We're just going to settle this once and for all. But now here he is. You thought he could, why his faith should be just sky high. I think emotionally he was weary. He was, you know, he had a huge success and it was kind of a letdown. Have any of you been there? We have all been there. We'll be honest. We, we have. We face things like that. Well, here, now we have a situation in our own world. And I, the Lord brought a word to me the other day and and I was really surprised. It did the Lord just just spoke this word to me, anesthetized. I said, well, Lord, uh, what, what do you want me to get from that? Anesthetize. And I began to look it up, and the Lord began to speak to me about the church as a whole. You know, there's a remnant that is standing strong, and they're holding on to the Lord. There always has been, and there always will be. Oh, don't you want to be part of that remnant? Well, you look, I looked up this word, anesthetize. And, you, and I know, well, I know when you take an anesthetic, before you have surgery, but that's not what the Lord was looking at. When you go on another meaning is having the senses dulled as if by an anesthetic. You know, I really believe that's what has happened. Uh, occasionally you may be in a church service. I'm thankful we don't have this kind, but I know there are those church services where honestly the people do not even know what real worship is. It's just a made up contrived stuff. And it's almost, and when you go to minister to some of these people, maybe one-on-one, -on -one, it's as though their senses are dulled, as if by an anesthetic. They are, they're feeding on things, uh, they're feeding their minds on things in or out of church that are not benefiting their spiritual being. It's so important that we be in God's holy word daily and all day long and throughout our day that we're worshiping the Lord. Yes, you're going to be going about your daily duties, but the whole time you're talking to the Lord. And we read his word. Lord, I want to apply that to my life. We have to personalize it every time we read God's word. So, you know, here I want to say that how that Elijah, you know, he had had a big victory and that was a big letdown. And he, you know, he couldn't see God, but he had seen God move. And now here he was facing a situation you know, Jezebel, he could, he could see with his own eyes. And he knew she had sent out an all-points bulletin. And I, I just wouldn't be a bit surprised but what she didn't tack on, uh, you know, reward for whoever brings him in, or uh, dead or alive. I mean, she hated this man because he spoke truth. And he became so weary. And as he began to run as hard as he could go to get away from her because said, she means business. I'm as good as dead. And she had killed his... Uh, he had killed her prophets. So boy, she was really in a rage. And she meant business. When she got ready to, to do something, I mean, she meant business. She didn't care what her husband thought, said, or did. She was going to take charge of things, and she did. He knew he was as good as dead. So he could see. He could see somebody like her. But God, he couldn't see. But God was watching him, and he knew exactly what was happening. Now here was the pain of isolation. He ran as fast as he could go get, to get away. And in that moment of distress, or those moments, many, and hours as he ran to get away from her, we don't go through the whole story, how that he wound up to, so far away, but God in his goodness, he didn't, he didn't condemn him and slam him and criticize him. No, did he do really what he should have done? No, uh, Elijah should have stood up to it, but he was human just like us, and he felt the pain of isolation and he wanted insulation. He wanted to be insulated, but he felt isolated and he also felt, I am so vulnerable. I am so vulnerable. I don't know who my friends are now. And if there's a reward out, they might turn me in. He was so afraid. Remember how the Lord fed him, even had ravens come and feed him. That is not their natural way of doing things. Ravens would not feed, would not bring food to somebody, but these did. Because God was in charge and ministering to this man. He was helping him. He sent angels to feed him, to, pre to prepare for him. 
it was amazing how the Lord blessed him. So may we know that when we face things sometime and we've had great victory and then we wonder, how can I be where I am now? Or we've looked at others and said, well, after all what God did for them and now look at them. Let's just look at it a little bit like this and let's have some compassion and think about this man who had just won a mighty victory. God had been marvelously using him and wanted to continue using him. Well, he found him, you know, he wound up in a cave of all the places. And the Lord is only worth said, what are you doing here? Well, Lord, I'm all by myself. There's nobody standing true. Everybody else has bowed their knee to Baal, but I'm the only one standing. He felt that way. He went by his feelings. That's exactly what he felt. But you know what the Lord spoke to him and said? Why? He said, you know what? I have 7,000 faithful just like you. But he didn't know that, that. He didn't see them. And so as far as he was concerned, they didn't exist. But they did exist. And how the Lord ministered to this man before it was all said and done. And we won't go about how when he was there in that cave and how all of this happened. It, you know, it was the thunder, the earthquake, and all these things that happened. And then the still small voice. The Lord had a plan and wanted to use him. I'm not finished with you, Elijah. He said, there's more ministry to do. He didn't say, oh, no, Lord. Oh, no, Lord, I'm not going. You know, he obeyed the Lord and how the Lord had strengthened this man. And I began to read, and I thought, Lord, this is what we need. It's a time of refreshing. And the Lord knows that. When we're battle-weary, and we've everyone been there, when you've been through situations that are out of your control, and you've had people say, well, if you're in the will of God, this wouldn't be happening. Well, we say, well, he did get out of the will of God. But you know, he still loved God. And that's what we need to understand. That when we're going through something that literally makes no sense, we must remember, my life is hid with Christ in God. And when he appears, I will appear with him. His word tells us that. But so here was this man. The Lord was not done with him. And so what did he do when he left out of there? God had a plan. You get ready to do some anointing. And he anointed Elisha. Elisha, a name almost like his, but he was from a wealthy family. And you think, with all that, with 12 uh, yoke of oxen, that, that spoke of somebody that was really wealthy. But you know what? This man, God had a plan for his life. And when Elijah came and he just put his, the mantle over him, ooh, something happened. He said, ooh, I've just got a feeling. He knew he had been called. And so he was anointed how uh, how Elijah anointed him. Oh, Lord, how wonderful how he ministered to him. And then others that he anointed. God was not finished with him. So sometimes when we feel like we're just so down and like Elijah felt like, uh, like in the shape that he was in, but I thought, you know, the Lord helped him to truth. And that's what he does to us. When we feel like I'm done for and I, I failed the Lord miserably now, I didn't keep the faith and I... I just feel real bad about the way I've been. God can't use me. And, and the devil will say, that's right. You know, he'll get right in there. But God is not finished with you. So if you're going through a time like Elijah did, and maybe you've really been living for the Lord and something came up and it's terrified you. Uh, Satan did something. Something happened. But I'll tell you what, the Lord has still got a plan. I'm, but the thing I want to get to for sure here is that Elijah, I'm confident, not only did he anoint Elisha, I believe he mentored him, and I believe he told him about this particular situation. i tell you where I'm going with this. I believe there come a time maybe in his life, and we're going to go to a time that I read about in 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 17. We're going to switch now to Brother Elisha. He's in a situation. I mean, it is an awful situation. There is no help no hope it doesn't look like but he's just resting he's just resting and so here comes his helper come in and said oh wake up elisha it's just horrible out there he said the, i mean the armies have surrounded us come on you've got and you know what elisha some i heard one preacher say he just raised up on one elbow well that was his idea i don't know what he did but I really believe that Elijah had instilled in him and said, listen, this is what happened to me when, when Jeze Jezebel got after me. God protected me and for his over wish she, she lost her life. But he said, I'm going to tell you, 
You don't let fear overcome you. After you've won a big victory, he said, that's the time. He said, you've got to be tougher, tougher than the trip. Sometimes the trip that the Lord sends us on, sometimes these assignments, they get tough, but we've got to be spiritually tougher than the trip. I really believe he instilled that in him. You've got to be tougher, tougher than the trip. God is with you. God will help you. I believe he put that in him. So now Elisha, now he says, and this man has said, it's just horrible. We don't even have a chance. And Elisha just as calmly, I want to read what, what the Bible says. He said to him, Elisha prayed. Elisha prayed. Elisha prayed. I believe he's praying. Lord, help me. And he said, oh, Lord, I pray. Open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he saw, and behold, or listen, pay attention, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. That's 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 17 and from the New American Standard Bible, 1995. Imagine that. Listen, look how he handled it. It was a situation that was so dire. I really believe that Elijah, based on his experiences, and that one in particular, when he mentored this man, he didn't say, oh, you'll figure it out. God will guide you. God will help you. You know, the Lord wants us. It's in Titus chapter 2. Now, they didn't have that back then, but we do. We are to be examples. And when, you know, it is not wrong to tell people about a time that you failed, about a time that you, when your faith kind of gave way. It's okay to do that. I really believe, and I remember one time, Brother David Wilkerson, David Wilkerson said the Lord spoke to him about, said people testify and they'll say, well, I was going through a great trial, but God delivered me, and I'm so thankful the Lord helped me. And he said, but you never tell how you won the battle. And that is what is happening to some people. You don't tell the battle. They don't know how to battle. They don't know how to win the victory. And Brother uh, David Wilson said that made a difference with him. I've heard people say, well, I don't want to give the devil credit. You're not giving the devil credit. That's not what that is. And I firmly believe it is important that when we go through a, a really, what we say, a real siege, something that we've come through victorious, that we tell people how we won the victory. We tell them that I had to get on my face before God. I had to pray and seek God and say, Lord, I need divine direction. And I don't want to just listen to this one and that one. The, the scripture, you know, does tell us we need to try the spirits. Not everybody that talked to us has, has the answer. They just talk off the top of their head. But it's very important that we tell people how we won the victory. And it wasn't just that, well, I just ignored it. No, you don't ignore it. So here now, let's get back to this. The thing, the return to ministry for him. God used him again and again, and how then Elisha was, became such a strong stalwart, a soldier of, for the Lord. I'm so grateful that he did. He just took those truths in. And you know, he, he had said to Elijah, now after Elijah had, we think, well, he had failed and all. He had an issue. Yes, he did. Who has not? If you tell me you haven't, I don't believe you. We're, we have them. But now he had come out of it, and now he had ministered more and more, and he mentored this man, and now how strong he was in the Lord. Stood faithful and true and led so many, and, and t uh, twice the miracles that Elijah had, because Elisha had said, when Elijah said, you keep following and you've been faithful, what is it that you want? He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. Do you hear that? I want a double portion of your spirit. You know, Elijah didn't run around after that, well, I failed. He didn't go around talking about, I failed, you know, back there, I failed. Don't look at me, I failed. No, instead, he said, I failed, and this is why I did, and I want to tell you how to overcome. And I believe going forward, he was an overcomer. And so he taught this, he mentored this to Elisha. So we don't want it to be that we don't want anybody to know one time that we, we failed, you know. If they know, they know, say, see, God is faithful, and he's given me the grace and the strength, and I can still work for him. That's what he wants us to do. The scripture tells us this, and let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart, if we don't faint. And that is from Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, the New King James Version. So we're going to have an eternity with him. We're going to have an eternity with him. And in it, we've all had a failure here and there. What's what are you going to, well, i got to put you over here because of it. No. When we repent, I mean, 
it's over the, it, it, you know, it's blotted out. It's, it's covered by the blood. It's blotted out. Whatever vehicle it is that the Lord wants to take us to glory. In Elijah's case, you know, here came a chariot of fire, you know, and how the, the mantle fell down. And, and the thing was that if Elisha, if he saw him when he was taken up, if he saw him, that he, he could have that double portion. He did. He was watching. He never took his eyes off of Elijah. Oh, because not Elijah wasn't God. But this was his mentor, and he did exactly what he said. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ is who we're following. Let's do exactly what he says. And he's going to help us one day. We're going to go to glory. Eternity with him. I don't know what, how it will be that I will go to glory. But I know this. And even say, well, even some people, when they're just like, there are martyrs. And you know what? They say, where was God then? He was there to take them to glory. He, it wasn't that he was off somewhere. He didn't have his back turned, his head turned. He was there to take them to glory. I tell you, when our work is finished on earth, when, I, when God is finished with the work he's called us to do, he's taking us home. He's longing to see us. We, we, we don't want to die. You know, we want to stay here. But I believe there comes a time that a person says, I'm ready to go. I've finished the course. That's what Paul said. I have fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. I, I've finished my course. And they said, I'm ready. I'm ready to go live with the Lord. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus, forever and ever when we see Jesus. A lot of people talk about the mansion. That's all right. He does have them prepared. But oh, to see him and to love him and to hug him. We love him now, but to be able to cast our crowns at his feet, but to look, just, I just want to hug him and tell him how much I love him. So even so then, we close with this, even so then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace, Romans 11, 5, from the King James Version. So I say again, let us be stronger spiritually and tougher than the trip. Guard your faith in God. We must guard our faith. That's what Satan is after, is your faith and your trust in God. Living by faith, the song says. We've come this far by faith, another song says. We live by faith and not by feelings and not by sight or ways. Remember this, it is God who is at work within you, giving you the will and the power to achieve his purpose. So good to be with you, and now we close, and until next Friday, may the Lord bless you and keep you. I hope that you will be in church a Sunday morning and Sunday night. We always plan to be, and on Wednesday night, and the storms they thought might come that kept us from having service Wednesday night, but we came home, we found a uh, We've got us a preacher that we can listen to, listen to a good message, but they're out there. There's people preaching and speaking the truth, and I'm thankful we have a church to go to like that. May the Lord bless you and keep you until next Friday morning around 1130. Goodbye.